Welcome to NYNJPA Weather, your weather source for the northern mid-Atlantic. I'm meteorologist Stephen DiMartino, and boy do we have a lot to go over with a major ice storm for the interior, and some more so even for the coast later on this week. Let's take a look at the latest forecast. Here's our current surface map as of 10 a.m., and you can see that high pressure is currently over the St. Lawrence River Valley, moving towards New England. Now this high pressure is very important because the reason for it to move east off the New England coast is because we have a positive NAO pattern in place. We haven't seen that that much this winter, but basically it means that the, that the upper level pattern allows this high pressure system to move off the coast. And that's important because that means winds will, will basically veer from the north and northeast, that is right now with very cold temperatures in the 20s, to the east which means that warmer marine air mass from the Atlantic is able to build into the coast, and that's going to have a significant impact on the forecast going forward. Meanwhile, an area of low pressure is developing in the Gulf of Mexico, and another area of low pressure is developing over the northern plains. These two areas of low pressure will both have an impact on the northern Atlantic, but unlike previous systems, not at the same time. Yes, these two storms are remaining separate. Let's take a look at the latest water vapor satellite picture. I have circled the two areas of disturbances that will impact the northern Atlantic over the next 48 to 66 hours. The first one is in yellow and basically that is our subtropical disturbance, once again very energetic, and it will move to the northeast towards the northern Atlantic coast. However, unlike other storms this year where you see a phase developing and cold air rushes towards the coast and you get a major snowstorm, these two disturbances will remain separate because the upper level pattern is slightly different. The upper level low that is usually over the Canadian Maritimes is a little bit further to the west, which produces a positive NAO pattern. Basically what that means is that everything keeps on moving. So this disturbance to the south does not have to wait for that disturbance to the north, and as a result, they stay separated and do not phase, at least not until they reach New England. As a result, warmer air is able to build into the coast, and so therefore the snow changes over to rain over much of the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan areas. Meanwhile, the interior, well, that's a little bit more tricky, which I'll show you why in this next feature. This is the latest NAM model guidance as of 12Z, and what I want to point out is that you see this pressure kink down towards Virginia, that's called cold air damming and it is rather powerful. Basically what it means is that cold air is trapped between the Appalachian Mountains and the coastal waters of the Mid-Atlantic. And when this type of cold air, which is an Arctic cold air mass, is trapped in these locations like northeastern Pennsylvania, northwestern New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, and parts of Connecticut, well that cold air doesn't really like to move very quickly. And when you have warm air trying to move over it, that's where you can get into a lot of trouble with snow, sleet, and freezing rain. Now again, because these two storms are going to remain separate, the cold front and low pressure system over the Great Lakes, and the low pressure system over along the southeast coast, they remain separate. And so therefore, the mid-levels of the atmosphere are able to warm above freezing, while the lower levels remain below freezing. And that is spelling out ice and could be quite a bit of it. The latest forecast from NYNJPA weather is here and let's take a look at the snowfall map. So here's basically what I'm expecting with this storm. If you're on the coastal plain, which is basically New York City, Long Island, much of central and southern New Jersey, down through the Philadelphia metropolitan area, basically what we can expect is a start off of some snow and some sleet late tonight anywhere between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. And that mixture of snow and sleet will continue on till about 3 or 4 a.m. However, with wind shifting to the east, temperatures will warm towards freezing, and that snow-sleet combination will change over to rain. Looking about an inch of snow and sleet before it change over to a heavy rain, up to an inch of heavy rain, and the potential for some localized urban flash flooding, where you, know, you combine the snow melt with the heavy rain, and you had a little bit of poor drainage, you can end up with some uh, minor flooding in some locations. The main issue is going to be the, the threat for hydroplaning with all this rain and water on the roadways. A little bit further to the north and west, we have an area basically over northern, northwestern New Jersey, uh, the southern Hudson River Valley, 
areas just away from the coast and areas just northwest of Philadelphia. We'll see a little bit longer prolonged period of sleet and freezing rain. Up to a tenth of an inch of ice is possible. Most locations will see a trace to about five hundredth of an inch. Uh, really won't be a major impact after, let's say, about 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. But still, there will be some light snow, one to two inches, change over to ice, and then we go over to a heavy rain at, along with the rest of the uh, region. So tomorrow morning might be a little bit more treacherous in these areas, so use some caution and drive slowly if you can. Now, to well to the northwest is where we end up with some real problems because this is where the cold air gets trapped. Towards the southeastern interior portions of Pennsylvania, like let's say Reading, Lancaster, York, the cold air is going to be able to remain in place. And at first, mostly snow will fall anywhere from 2 to 4 inches of snow. But then that's going to change over to a sleet and freezing rain combination, where a tenth to a quarter of an inch will be likely. That extends all the way up into northwest New Jersey, and again into southern and uh, central portions of the Hudson Valley. Basically to the south of Poughkeepsie and to the north of, of uh, White Plains is going to be an area that is going to be very icy tomorrow morning. So if you don't have to travel, don't. And then further north as you move into northeastern Pennsylvania, like around Scranton and Wilkes-Barre, and then off towards Poughkeepsie and south of Albany, and then towards Hartford in Connecticut, well those locations have a real significant threat of ice. Up to a half an inch of ice is possible after about two to four inches of snow. Two inches of snow if the mix changes over a little bit faster. Four inches if it takes a little bit longer. But overall, the main threat here is clearly going to be the ice. The ice is going to be rather heavy at times. And um, one of the main concerns is heavy freezing rain, which could really pile up on the onto the power lines and create the threat for power outages. So just be prepared for a rather icy event for northeastern Pennsylvania on through the Hudson Valley, central Hudson Valley, and into northern Connecticut. It is not going to be pretty. In this area in purple, the far northern areas, I do not expect any change over terrain. This is going to be a complete frozen event, mostly ice, unfortunately, and it's going to be a very nasty uh, day on Tuesday tomorrow. So what can we expect after this storm leaves, which should be about Tuesday evening. Well, we're going to get an Arctic cold front, the cold front that is further to the west, that is not going to phase with this coastal storm. That cold front moves through, Arctic air builds in, and then something interesting starts to develop for Friday. Let's take a look at the, again, the NAM, out to 84 hours, but it still shows some similar attributes to what all the other models are showing. Now, normally I don't use the NAM model guidance at 84 hours, but it Pretty much is similar to what we're seeing on the GFS, European, UK Met, and pretty much every other mid-range model guidance we have. And that's basically a potential phase over the Tennessee River Valley uh, by uh, early Friday morning that will eventually translate to a potential major winter storm further east. Now when we look at the surface map, we can clearly see an area of low pressure starting to develop over the Tennessee River Valley. This low pressure system, based on the way that the 500 millibar pattern is evolving, will track towards the Delmarva Peninsula and then along the coastal waters of New Jersey and towards the benchmark around 40 north, 70 west. This type of storm track will produce a heavy snowfall for parts of the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area, which I have highlighted in dark blue. If this storm does take this track, we are looking for a significant snowfall on Friday, possibly into Saturday, of anywhere over six inches of snow, uh, definitely some strong winds, again another major snowstorm. We're going to have to see how this phase works out. If the phase is a little bit off, then this storm might not be as strong, so we'll have to keep an eye on it, but it's certainly something to be aware of as we move towards the end of this week. Thank you for using NYNJPA Weather. I'm meteorologist Stephen DiMartino. Have a wonderful day.